Hi, I'm John, and I'm a, um, an artist. And primarily, I'm, I'm focused on painting. And actually, I take painting as a position. You know, so it's not just a, a kind of medium for me. It's part of the identity of what I do and how I practice. It's how I frame all my my thoughts. I mean, the whole thing with art began very young, actually. You know, so it's like Star Wars, right? You know, you, you watch the the movies and you know you read comics, and yeah, I just wanted to do that that stuff. I I want to go into that, into that, right? Then I I went to La Salle. And then in La Salle, I got exposed to paintings. And then I, I, at the beginning, I wasn't good at it. I was not good at drawing. I was not good at painting. I wasn't good at anything. And suddenly, something happened. Maybe it's just one day I was drawing some figures and a live drawing class. And then suddenly, the lecturer just says, hey, that's pretty good. You know? and, then, and then something gets born out of that. Once I got into art school, like everything just got better. You know? So yeah, something about me was always drawn to, to uh, making art. Basically, in my paintings, there are two things that I gravitate towards. One has, it's more to do with the painting themselves, you know, so I, I tend to paint in a way that is um, assertive, yet restrained. So, it sounds contradictory, but that also leads to the um, subject matter that I'm usually gravitating towards. My work is fundamentally concerned with this idea of uh, dividedness. I, I started to realize it had a lot to do with alienation and from there I learned that it's not a kind of alienation that it's you know like a, a very typical alienation is like a rebel. This one it's more like you know being it's the feeling of being stuck like you're in between places so it's usually that those sorts of things that I look for in, in painting. It could be very formal things, but it, it also can um, have things to do with the content. Earlier in my practice, I didn't actually focus on Singapore. So it's just more like images in general. But I felt, I felt like when you know I, I moved on and became about Singapore, it, it brought things closer to home, brought things closer to me. So the subject I paint, sometimes they're just, sometimes they're ordinary people. And then the character of the, in, the alienated person would be me. The painter. You know, I really do want to position painting such that it's not just seen as a commercial entity, but it's also something that can be taken seriously. It's almost like they're conceptual artists that allow the paintings to direct the ideas to somewhere different. When I when I first applied, um, it was it was true encouragement. So from from my friends, and before that, you know, I, I didn't. I, I didn't actually have, um, I wouldn't say negative, but I, I suppose I had a lot of doubts about the uh, price. It's, it's just natural to my character to have doubts, right? And so, you know, I would question like, it's, it's like apples and oranges. So for instance, you know, if I won the prize and this person was in painter, you know, what, and like, how would we compare? Our friend said, you know, why not? And what's the harm in it? Just try. And so, I felt like, okay, this time it felt right. I feel like I'm myself, like whatever I'm doing, I feel quite confident. Yeah, why not start to just apply for these things? So yeah, I gave it a shot. And I'm glad I did. Yeah. Just getting the prize is like a pat on the back. First of all, it's affirmative. It, it's sort of like signaling to me in a, in a soft way, saying, hey John, we know what you're doing. We, we understand it. Um, appreciate it and go on, keep keep at it, right? So that's the first thing. Then with the price, you know, I, I, I have plans with it. I, I, I do think like a, a portion of it will go probably in the future to a PhD. I'm still like thinking about that, you know, you have to get a really good research question in your head before you want to engage in that. And I feel like I want to take that on when I'm slightly older so that it's, it's richer, you know. With the rest of the money, traveling, I'm, I'm planning to go to London and check out some Cezanne, look at some painters, meet some painter friends there, maybe go do some studio visits. All that stuff is really, um, I think it's part and parcel of what keeps you going as an artist, keeps the momentum going. Yeah, so it's very, very helpful. Yeah. You've got to go and actually see the things, the paintings themselves. It, it's one thing to see them in the books, it's another thing to actually get the sense of the weight of the material, the scale, the colour, the comp I mean, you got to be there in front of the thing for it to really operate. And I think when you do that, what happens is 
it becomes a, a ritual experience. It's almost like a, it's almost religious. You go and you see like a process of like a religious experience, and then and then after that you can you can criticize it if you want. But what it does, I think, if it, it creates in you a sense that it's it's like a journey, which is very different from like if you're a young artist and you're following a kind of trend. So one thing I'd say, be careful of the trend. Now trends can be great, you know, you can you can follow, and a lot of young artists do it. And it's, in some ways, it's natural, but the problem is it, you better hope that it's the trend that you can follow on for the rest of your life, because trends they come and they go, all right. So um, let's hope that whatever you know you're you're hanging on to now, it lasts more than like the lifespan of trends. You know, usually trends last for like a decade, which is quite long, right? So yeah, so just be careful and hopefully it's something that you, you grow into.